looking here uh, to do a show. Gonna have uh, have uh, Patterson Hood on today, tonight. Very excited. It's gonna be a uh, w- wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna sit here and, and talk some writing, and we're gonna we're gonna probably uh, you know talk about some other stuff, and 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 uh, maybe maybe we'll. Uh, you know, maybe we'll 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 be uh, better people at the end of this. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Uh, hello, everyone. This is your chance to say hello before um, before Patterson comes on, and and I can see you now because as soon as he comes on, I'm turning them comments off. You know the deal. Uh, so, you know, yeah. Um, we'll see. Where is he going? Let's see. Maybe I'll give him a little request here. See what happens. Maybe not. Hello. Let's see. Let's see. Hello. Hi, everybody. I don't know. You know, if you can, somebody say, "Can you donate from Canada?" I don't. I don't know. Actually, I just I put it up on there, and then I, I hope you would be able to. But I'm sure you could just go and find the link to it. It's, the internet is super fast these days. Oh, there he is. Let me see this. I'm going to. That was that was quick. I didn't know that was an option. Hey, <laughs> I didn't know it, I could click on your name when you put a comment, and it said, "Hey, the go live with Patterson." And I said, y- "Yes, I will." <laughs> Which is great. I'm, I'm in tech hell always. <laughs> Let, this is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was not built for these no, things. <laughs> no, this, this last three months has been like the antithesis of everything, the way I've tried to live my life for my entire adult life. And uh, it's not agreeing with me at all. <laughs> no, I think that, I mean, I once had a criticism of one of my... Uh, records which not a criticism but said about me that i bet you that they said i bet you brian doesn't even text people which is absurd but because i have that sort of you know i don't know like this kind of connect with anything you know techie especially like right. stuff like this but i i it the time said absolutely not you have to do this now yeah yeah, but then I've, now I've kind of found a little bit of joy in it. Sometimes, you know. Yeah, I, I, I when I'm actually doing my show because I've been doing these shows up here in my attic, and um, mm-hmm. when I'm actually doing it, I usually have about three days after it where I feel almost human. Yes, <laughs> you know, and then and then the depression and the anger comes back, and I'm I'm back in my sad place you know? i'm with you but it does feel good to be able to see someone else yeah, and talk for sure. and th- i think that sometimes i, oh, I, I do looking forward to this like you wouldn't believe well, thank <laughs> like, you thank like, you wow, i'm looking i'm so looking forward to just like talking to somebody <laughs> yeah. <Instagram>. Right. <laughs> well, like I don't my my folks have not figured out uh they they insist on not using uh on Apple products. So, which right. I respect. But so I can't FaceTime them. So it's a little tough. Um, right. so I don't see anyone. I FaceTime no one ever. Uh, so this is my only time and I've got I think it's funny because like I think people um like people think that I kind of like randomly book people as the weeks go, but I don't. Like I have people scheduled all the way out to July, wow. and so yeah. every well, I've been week for like two months. <laughs> yeah, man, and and like I love looking at the at the calendar because I go, oh, and then this is going to be Patterson's coming on, and then I got this and this, and like there's all these cool, and I love that there's no lead up, there's no promotion. I'm just doing it like right before it happens. It's yeah. cool. So yeah, it is. It's not too bad, you know. Maybe like now we'll just do Instagram shows and then like play the good cities that we like, and then the cities yeah. that were crappy to us, we'll just say, "Nah, we're not playing you anymore." Yeah, no, nah, I'm scared of the virus. Can't go to that city. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you yeah, no. an outbreak. <laughs> right. <laughs> I heard there was a uptick. Yeah. We're out. Yeah, we're yeah. out of here. So at, at, this, at this point, I can't think of a city that I'm 
not looking forward to playing. I mean, I, I, in all honesty, I'm trying to think of like my least favorite gig of the last 20 years. Yeah. And I would do it. To, I would do it right now. I would just go play it happily. I'd be, yeah. I'd be like thrilled to be on their nasty stage and pissing in their filthy bathroom, you know, and, and being abused by some asshole bartender. I don't know. It sounds awesome. It does. There's like <laughs> seeing a bartender sounds awesome. I, I would love it. You yeah. know that uh, you know that venue out in the like middle of Pioneer Town in California that Pappy and Harriet's. You know that yeah. place. Never got to play it. Oh, it's awesome, oh, but man. there's no bathroom. There's no. Oh. It's like <laughs> it's like a public, full on like saloon door bathroom vibe. Like so, right. you best not have to go. Right. <laughs> Which, right. But even there, I would be like, let's do it. Yep. Yeah. Sure, I'll play in the bathroom. I don't yeah. care. At this the point. place yeah. is awesome though it's it's <laughs> awesome to play it, you play right on the floor and there's no like there's no stage at all you just you're literally like on the floor it's awesome i got offered a show there last summer and i really wanted it was with the uh, cracker uh doing their uh oh yeah their thing that they do their residency thing that they do and uh they they were do, gonna do like an acoustic like songwriter night like the night before it all kicked off and they asked me to do it with dave and um uh, I'm trying to think now who else was doing it, but uh, it's like people I love to hang out with, and yeah, with. and uh, I just I had a, it was like like I was home for like five days or something yeah. right in the middle. That would have been right in the middle of like a, a, some time home that I just wasn't having much of, and uh, yeah. I just couldn't do it for personal reasons. And it, so I, I still hope to get to do that at some point. I've been there. Like it happens. You gotta yeah. you know when you come yeah. home for that short of a time. I mean because. You and I both, we're still out there quite a bit. Yeah. When we can. Yeah, so. yeah normally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, Never I slowed down. In, uh, Dublin tonight, I think, actually. Oh, that'd be cool. I'd be just yeah. coming home now. So I would have just finished up uh, in Europe. Yeah, I was, I was. Our Europe tour would have started like three days ago, I think. And uh, so, yep. Crazy. Not Dublin. Uh, well, I love Dublin. Now, yeah, I do too. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good city. But now we're here, we're together, you know, it's all right. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I mean, like, well, the whole thing's about basically writing and, and what, you know, how you, I mean, you have, you have a, a team full of, of, of writers. You have to share all that. Yeah. And like, yeah, for sure. Well, I, I got song. Well, I got a song. Well, I don't ever know. I couldn't imagine like doing that. But so, but you've been, not only do you do that, but now you've got your own records. You've got so many. I feel like you got songs just falling out of your fingertips. Uh, I mean, I've got a lot of songs. They they don't they don't pour out as fast. It's funny because I've been I'm kind of in writing mode, which makes me super spacey and really kind of worthless for every other thing in life. Yeah. And um, I've been working on a song for about three days, and last night I went to bed thinking I had conquered it. Man, it's like man, I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one. And then I woke up this morning and fucking hated it and, oh no uh, you hated it oh yeah hate it, oh. hate it. I was like so pissed off and so i've been in like a really weird mood today and kind of a weird i mean i mean things are fucking with my head anyway right now but yeah. uh but that that didn't help because i really felt like i had something and then i woke up today and i mean there's definitely things about it that it, that i'm excited enough to where i haven't given up on it but it's not there and uh yeah so uh you know the feeling you know? i do yeah so, uh, i don't yeah. like that feeling that's no, the feeling i don't, that I don't like the most no not at all and uh so that that's kind of been today i've been pretty much all day like trying to see if i can salvage it my goal i wanted i wanted to like pull it out and, like like ah, let's finish this boom yeah, yeah I don't think so. it's, no it's... Uh, it'll come <laughs> you'll figure it out i got faith in you i think yeah. you've written a few songs so i feel like it's gonna be okay yeah, it, it 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 happens, you know. It happens. It does. Yeah. So, like now, with with doing this for so long, do you have you settled on a on a way that you you work? Whether you're doing this, like, is this? Do you have like a process? Because I do not. I just you mean like writing, things. writing. Yeah. Like, no. Oh, I've got like my process is like every process I can come across. I want to try it. And Me too. See what I can get out of it. You know, more than anything, it seems like I've got what I refer to as writing mode. And when I'm when I'm there, 
I'm basically this like spacey. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just, it's like someone who's the most stone stoner ever, which, you know, I smoke a lot of dope, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but I mean, this predates like long before I ever did that. I've always had that like condition as a, as a kid or whatever. It's almost like I'm just, just, I'm in this like days. And when I'm like that, I can write pretty prolifically. I can, I can kind of throw it down or at least historically, but, um, but I can't function. And uh, yeah. so I have to like trick myself into staying out of that long enough to like raise my family and, uh, and work my job and do press and cook dinner, whatever <laughs> needs to happen, you know, get, get to the store and back without getting lost. And, right. Uh, so, uh, I, I, so, so it's, it's, it's kind of this weird thing trying to strike a balance between what it takes mentally to do my job as a writer and what it takes to function as a human being and uh so i've been in like this kind of writing i've kind of been in this writing mode for the last several days and uh and i thought i was going to be able to kind of go back into the world today and it's not happening <laughs> yeah no i feel that where you just kind of go into the the void where right it's, it's difficult to check in and out you know and like yeah it is i feel like it gets to be um it's something that i find like i think any kind of writer will sort of say the same thing artists poets uh painters they, they i find the same thing where they say that like they do have trouble sort of interacting like i i become sometimes like if i'm in the middle especially when i'm I, when i write like if there's a, a say it's like i've been writing all day but then it's like kind of dinner time and like i gotta like i got little kids so i gotta stop and like right. it's gotta be dinner time and then uh sometimes i'll i'll be like eating dinner or something and i'll, I'll just be like gone for a second and i'll come back and be like whoa because i was thinking about the song go? <laughs> yeah like <laughs> like that that and i'm just like oh sorry i was in songland <laughs> yeah but, like, it's really difficult to not sort of stay, like I, I don't know like the, it's like going through the curtain you know of the the yeah. mystics like I don't know it's really bizarre when I have to come back prematurely it it puts me in a really lousy place I come back in a bad mood yeah and I really struggle because I don't want to take that out on my kids you know yeah because uh, I really take that being dad thing seriously I try really hard not to let being a fucked up artist, fuck up being a dad too, yeah. and uh, and so uh, and I, you know, and I had the luxury. I was older when I had kids. I mean, I was forty before we had our first one, and so oh, okay. Uh, so that uh, you know, that that helps because it's easier to not be quite as self centered. I think when you get at a certain age, or maybe sometimes it has been for me. I'll say that. yeah, yeah. So. Uh, I can relate to that. I think so that's it, true. It, it, it's, 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 a, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. You know, fortunately my, my, my kids are getting older and they're, they're, you know, they're pretty patient with me. They, they generally like me. So uh, they're, they're, they kind of know, Oh, you know, dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's good though. That like, they, they, I think they understand too, like that there's once they get a little bit, like one of mine is a little bit older and one's still young, but they, How they do. Uh, seven is the oldest and four is the youngest. Oh, you're still in the thick. You're still in a little the bit. Thick. Yeah. But <laughs> they're still cool too, where they don't like, they still kind of think it's like one time, I don't know, like they sort of see like that when I'm doing something and then they're kind of like, if I'm out of it, like the older one will be like, dad's gone again. He's off the planet. You know, the rocket ship has left. And then I'll be like, oh, no, 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 I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. What, what? You know, yeah. and then I have to just like put the guitar down, which is fine. They like, but they understand and they kind of think it's funny because they do know that if they need anything, like my, uh, I have like an office, but it doesn't have a door on it. So like when I write, it's like they just are running around. Right. Like they don't, they're not like circling the desk, but they do come in at times and they're like, yeah, guess what? And you're just like, so I've learned to kind of balance a little bit. It's taken a while. I've just recently gotten an office. I've, uh, uh, been in this house for three and a half years or something like that almost almost four years and uh 
and it's been under construction the whole time. And uh, yeah. like, you know, we, like we, we only recently got a kitchen and uh, it's been like crazy. And uh, Whoa. So I wrote the last record as far as my songs on the last record, I wrote it in the living room with just pure chaos and, and, and then wondered why I was having such a hard time writing it. But uh, <laughs> now I look back on it, it's like, oh yeah, because of uh, yeah. sitting there in the living room with, you know, <laughs> everything yeah. going on. But, you got to do it though. Yeah, I just so I just moved up here into the attic about uh, uh, just as the quarantine started, which was a blessing oh, wow. that I at least had this to get to do. And the first week I was up here, I wrote like crazy, and then real life just kind of took over, and I, I'm I'm really just now trying to get back into that mindset. And, yeah. Uh, so we'll see. It's 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 a lot of like this lately, like oh, oh, oh you know, like everything seems like you're on a boat in the middle right. of the ocean. What's going on? Yeah. Like if I see a unicorn run through the backyard, I won't be surprised at all. Not Martians. Uh, Martians, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, yeah. It, it, it's <laughs> nothing. I'm I'm I've become becoming pretty unshockable and yeah. uh, and not in a good way. You know. <laughs> yeah. I will say that I don't have a lot of sense of humor about it, but no. I think that uh, that's another thing I think that also happened uh, like when I just turned 40, but when I turned 40, I sort of, it became easier for me now, especially when I sit down to write because I care. It's almost, it's so bizarre from 39 to 40. I care so much less about what people think of my opinion right. because I know that it's just my opinion and it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's what I've sort of found over the last 40 years. And, you know, when I'm working, I don't have as much trouble thinking about stuff like, I don't know, is that line cool? I'm just like, no, I like it. I'm writing it down. Here we go. Right. And, and that's it, you know? So I don't know. Maybe that's part of it, too, that I'm just like, well, I'm comfortable with my own thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. 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 Yeah. Good, good to be, you know? And, uh, and I, I think that might be part of the problem I'm having right now is for generally, I at least know what I think I should do. And mm. this whole, the, the quarantine bullshit and the, and the, the you know, the, the, the virus and now everything that's happening, you know, politically and, the, and everything, it's just, it's, it's got me really disjointed up here as to where I, I question everything. And yeah. even, even things about, you know, things that, it never occurred to me to question and and, mm -hmm. I, and some of that's good i think it's i think it's healthy as a human being especially as you get older because older people tend to question less sometimes because they start thinking they have all the answers and and i've always rebelled against that but i'm talking about down in like a bedrock level of just things like you know like the opening line of song like, yeah like, well, every sure. time, yeah yeah. I mean, I think everything is, is up for that. Like, especially now, I think that that's a good, I think everyone's collectively kind of going like, do I have that right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I think like that can be good. I know for sure that I, I felt the same way, like in recent, especially recently, just kind of being like, what's that about? You know, and kind of going in and digging around in the, in the dirt and seeing what's, why do you think this? Or what do you think? You know, I think this is healthy to do, you know? Yeah only way to only way to grow at all is to sort of take a good look right you know yeah you gotta take you gotta take the look once in a while well well this is this is what we do so what we do is normally is uh, is we play like a, a, at least a song and right. so i figured like i'll 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 start it out i'll break the ice with the uh the old chisel um but uh i've been watching um i just started to watch uh that that movie, uh, there's a new movie called We Were Brothers about the band. Have you seen that yet? I haven't seen it yet. I just started it. It's it's pretty good, but I fell asleep in within the first ten minutes. Right, because young kids, you know. But uh, like so, uh, it, but it was pretty good, and it's you know that like kind of thing was like one of my favorite sort of eras of music, especially growing up. Is like you know my mom would show me the band and and, and dylan like really early dylan stuff too so right. all that stuff you know i just love it and uh so but today i figured i would do this is an old dylan song i maybe before he had a record contract but it was on one of the bootleg series the first one 
And uh, it's it's a good song. It's called I don't know whether he wrote it or somebody else wrote it, but it's great. And it's called uh, He Was a Friend of Mine. So okay. I'm gonna play this one. Yeah, that's a good one. So, yeah, man. So if you have a tea or something, feel free, and and I'll see you on the other side of this song. Okay. All right. <laughs> a good song i don't know if he wrote it i don't know now i gotta got look that up now but, it's uh, tough yeah when when i was uh when i was growing up my mom was a, a, a singer in the 60s of like folk singer. she had a band and, like um they mostly did like standards but that uh, i don't know if they did any originals i'm not sure uh but uh she always showed me like the early records so like when i was a kid before i ever heard anything on my own i had sort of this like education of of these folk songs like i i don't even think i heard the radio before i heard all this stuff and then it was like a really good foundation and and when as i got older i always kind of like went back to that being like i was like this is the coolest stuff i'm ever going to hear so anything else i was always kind of less impressed with right you know so I don't know. Like, I, I always thought that was the music that I enjoyed the most. And, uh, you know, I, I find that I still find myself connected to it now. Right. Yeah. It's, um, uh, by the way, kudos on the new record, man. That's a oh. really great record. That's, that's, Thank that's you. fantastic. You so, too. You guys put out a, like a killer one. God, we did. Like, like, yeah, did. like forever ago. I think it was like February. <laughs> yeah, it was like not yeah. long ago. In the January or something. But, uh, uh, it feels like a lifetime ago. It, it's it's so weird. And uh, oh. uh, like I said, I was supposed to be in Dublin tonight <laughs> <laughs> playing those songs. So it's kind of uh, strange. But, uh, I guess, it is. I guess 2021 will be the new 2020. <laughs> I'm hoping so. Like, I think that that's kind of the, the vibe because it'd be tough to do a drive-in tour of Europe. No, it sounds awful. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. it's going to be tough. Yeah, I I know that they're they're doing one um, like down in, down like town a little bit like on the shore and they're gonna try it. But I was like, okay, you know, that, let's see how that goes. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just not the same, you know. Yeah, I I know. And the the not knowing when we get to go back to work, you know, and 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 what that's gonna look like is is really, you know, it's 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 tough. Yeah. Well, I think every once in a while, like, I'm cool with it on a general 
day to day basis. I, I try to stay busy and then I'm with the kids and, and we're, you know, we, we kind of keep like a mellow pace inside, but then right. every once in a while, like I find that like I'll poke my head up and be like, what is happening? Like, what am I going to ever work again? Like, right. and then I sort of go, uh Oh, you know, and yeah. then, uh, I don't know. It's a tough one. It pops up on me. Yeah, it, it, me, me too. Me too. Like I said, whenever I do one of those attic shows for about three days, I have like this. I felt like I played a show kind of, you, yeah. thing, you know, and so, yeah. uh, so I just try to ride that as long as I can yeah. until that day when I wake up and, it's just up and I'm like, uh. yeah, I love that. That's good yeah. though. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Oh, cool, man. So you're, you, you're are you working on new songs right now, like in this general period? I mean, might as well. I'm 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 trying to work on anything that I can do. You know, it's like I yeah. it's like I mean, I had this whole year basically marked off that we were on tour. You know, yeah. we, you know, I'd be on tour, and if I wasn't on tour, I'd be at home trying to catch up and do as good a job as I can being daddy until I've got to go back out and be on tour again. And that was supposed to be this year. We were going to play, you know, hundred, however many, 120 shows this year. And, uh, yeah. Wow. And, and we did our first leg, our first like three week leg of the tour. And, uh, then I flew to Indianapolis for what was supposed to be the first show of our second leg of the tour. And we were two songs of the sound check when it all got, you know, wow. and uh, yeah. we, we literally went from second song of sound check to loading the trailer back up. And then I hitched a ride back down to Georgia with the, uh, with the band on the bus and then caught a flight home the next day. And I've been here in my attic, you know, ever since. And that yeah. was right before St. Patrick's Day. Or it was oh. like Friday. I got home on Friday the 13th. So, wow. That's crazy. Morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's nuts. I, my mine was closer. Like I went to Delaware, so it was the first day of the tour. And then, like during sound check, I think they're like, after the show, they're like, "You done? You going home?" And I was like, "Okay," yes. you know. So it was weird, but you know, whatever. You got to do it. So I, mean, I think writing is the best. Yeah, writing is the best way to do it. Um, well, now, so when you do get in, have you have you found a way that you can? that that helps you when you get like in a jam or when you get stuck and you're just kind of staring at the page? I mean, probably the best thing is to leave it and come back, you know, but, uh, yeah. but uh, for however long and uh, which is easier during regular times, but right now there's really nothing to leave it for that is, can take my mind where it needs to go to get away from it and, you know, right. the right way. And, uh, so, uh, so it's it's tricky, you know. But uh, it, I'll I'll figure it out. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you know that's the, the thing. Yeah, you know, I, I love writing more than about anything. I, I really, you know, when it's going good, it's like a super rewarding thing and, and a good process. But uh, uh, but I don't, but I don't really have like a, you know. There's some people. I mean, I know people that like keep office hours and they go in and they write. You know, I'm, that yeah. amazes me. I, 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 I would love to be able to do that, but it yeah. doesn't have to work for me like that. Yeah, and it's just gotta, it's just gotta hit me, or else it don't. And, right. Uh, and so, you know, it's a strange thing. It is. I mean, yeah. So many people are like they do so many different things. I think that there's like these all these different schools. I kind of do like I usually do like drop the kids off in the morning at school, and then I I go okay. You know, nine to nine to three is like I'm gonna try and do something, and then like I a lot of times I end up sitting there and just like kind of right. you know researching something or trying to read a book for my head to go like oh okay or I'll play the guitar or whatever. But um, I do find that it is difficult to find the time. Uh, but I I'm one of those people who has to allow a lot of time to come up with something good because a lot right. of times it's just it's just digging around for ideas. Yeah, my, my partner Cooley, he's a morning writer. He 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 he, he gets up in the morning, and um, he, sometimes he likes to cut his yard because that helps. <laughs> he'll cut his yard. He'll get up in the morning and cut grass and then write a song. Really? Know? But I tend to be more late night. I tend to I tend to do better 
as the day goes on. I'm such a terrible morning person. Bruce Cooley is a morning person. He gets up yeah. in the morning. If we're on tour, he's the first one up. He's the first one out of his bunk, you know. Okay. He, he's up at nine drinking coffee and, and holding court as anyone gets up, whereas I'm watching <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and I'm the last one, but I'm the last one to go to bed, too. Right. I'm usually up for two hours alone after everybody else has crashed out, just, you know, sitting in the back, staring or whatever. And uh, so. Uh, That's the sacred hours, though. You know, you need those yeah. hours. Yeah. I love, by yourself. I love late night. Yeah. yeah. I do that when uh, when I'm on tour. I, I kind of keep like, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not the first one up, but I'm not the last one. But at home, uh, I eat. Like, I get up right about the same time as everyone else. Um, but I do stay up later, just naturally. Um, and everybody's asleep. But I, those are my hours. Those, those like, couple hours where I can just, it's quiet. And I just sort of, like, all right, what's in the world? What does this mean? You know, yeah. the science hours for the brain. Right. You know? But uh, I try to, the, the other thing, too, by those, with those, uh, with those hours I, I try to like leave the phone because if i do that I, sometimes like, i could just like be googling stuff all night and i find that that doesn't lead to a lot of good thinking right so I, I try to like make myself time to just be like i'm gonna put the phone down and whatever that thing's saying is fine and it allows my brain to i don't know think do what it does <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think i think social media is definitely bad for the brain and for the writing process and i'm and i'm super guilty of spending way too much time uh you know political especially about the political shit because i get i get really riled up and, and yeah. into that and uh and I, i'm sure that's not healthy you know but uh, i think 50 it is but it's not because it like sometimes it's necessary like especially i think you know, with, with you, like, you have a lot of things that even in your songs that are important to have been said. I think always you've been doing that. Um, yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to, like, waste time in, like, engaging with, like, people who are just not really interested in having a conversation. They're just poking at you. Yeah. But it's a hard balance on the social because you don't – you have no idea when you're talking to somebody. Like, there's no expression. There's no, like, you know, not enunciation. What do you, what do you what am I looking for? Yeah. The word, the word, yeah. you know, we're emotion in the, in the speaking. Like there's no, you can't tell what they're right. really, you know, so sometimes like I've read something and been like, are you kidding me? And then I'll read it back and go, Oh wait, that doesn't mean that. Right. <laughs> yeah. so much. Sarcasm sometimes doesn't, doesn't really do right on that. <laughs> right. And, uh, and I, I've gotten into trouble there because I can be super sarcastic and, oh. uh, and uh, so uh, I definitely have to watch myself. Like, no, 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 no. You think, yeah, it's like, it's like I was being serious, but not the way you think it was. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's, it's a tightrope. I mean, it's yeah. not, it was not designed for people our age to do, I don't think. You know, right. I think it was like a, like, I, it, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, I wonder if, if like, what would, could you imagine like Bob Dylan on Twitter? <laughs> Like, I mean, it might would be awesome. I don't know. It if, might. Or, or how long, I mean, how many tweets would it take for him to get one of, you know, I mean, his, his you know, his single the other day was, what, 17 minutes long? Yeah. <laughs> I thought <laughs> which, that was awesome. Which, by the way, I, I'm, I'm firmly on the, on the yes side on that one. I, I yeah, love that me too. One. I thought it was amazing. And, I like it. Uh, it was probably my favorite Dylan song in a, in a well, it's been a while anyway, but it was, I really liked it. And I've liked a lot of the later day, you know, what I refer to as old man Dylan. I've liked a lot of that. Like, I love Love and Theft and Modern Times. And, yeah. Uh, uh, all, all of the post 97 albums, uh, I've tended to like a lot, but I particularly liked the, that song, the JFK song. Oh, yeah. The, I think that he kind of, I don't know, like he hit a little bit of a stride there too in that um yeah. like modern times and I mean uh Time Out of Mind is one of my favorite all time albums. I agree. So, yeah, it's it's crazy, but I don't know. Like that I, I'm encouraged by those like later career, you know, like home runs. Like I think right. we, like Lucinda's having one of those too, you know. I, I love the new Lucinda. Yeah. Record. It's my favorite thing she's done in, in 
probably close to 20 years. I mean, I yeah. really loved it. It's cool. And like, that's encouraging where, cause she came out hot right from the gate right, with a great record. And then right. like, and then like mid career, I don't even know if you could call it mid career, but like, the, like car wheels like came out and then, and then now again, it's like, it's just proof that if you, if you're a good writer and you keep swinging, you're going to have home runs. Like you are, you just aren't. I yeah. love that. I'm always encouraged because I'm getting older. So I'm always encouraged by any of the, the older artists that have found a way to really still be writing good stuff in later years, you know, cause when I was growing up, rock and roll was still considered a young man's thing. You know, yeah. it was all, it was still, you know, and then, we were all coming to age, coming of age at the era when as the rock the big star rock stars were getting older they were all being acting like the worst of the midlife crisis you know it's like yeah. all these, you know 45 and 50 year old rock stars trying to pretend they're still 25 and uh and it made for some really bad music to my in my opinion and yeah. had, you know just that in itself is aged so badly but then there's always been the, you know, the Tom Waits guy. Yes. Kind of an old man when he was young and as he's gotten older, or or what we refer to as the Grandpa Jones syndrome, you know. It's like he's been playing this this old man character since he was a kid and not, and he's just aged into it. Like yeah. time is fine. And uh Dylan's kind of done that. I mean, I think I think Dylan's voice is probably more now like he wanted it to be when he was young i think yeah. he wanted to have this old man voice before he really had it and that's uh, probably true so uh that's know, true that's how i feel was pretty good with the aging thing you know yeah he's, he's, and so uh i love that it's it's funny with you know when you mentioned especially with like tom waits like a, a friend of mine we we're talking the other day and and it was like I kind of came in, I was like maybe 19, 18 when, when that Mule Variations record came out. But like what I kind of didn't understand is I went back and looked at some of the press from before that. And like I, I, people did not seem to get it. Like when it was like Bone Machine and that stuff, when he made that transition. Oh, Bone Machine. Yeah. yeah, but I love those records. And yeah. I think that people wanted him to sort of be like the guy who wrote songs that the Eagles could sing. But he right. didn't want to do that anymore. And then it wasn't until new variations when he was he was 50 52 51 yeah. and and then and then it sort of was like the world caught up to what he was doing he's like oh okay yeah so that's cool it's i love that stuff me too me too so i think that's good well do you have a you have a song and one of them you want to play yeah yeah i, I would love it. it um everyone would love it we were uh we were talking about um you know where where songs hit you and how they hit you and all that and uh, uh i've never been great at writing songs on the road because there's so much happening out there it's it's hard to you know be uh, let your mind go where it needs to go but the one i'm gonna do is an exception i wrote it uh, it was kind of the breakthrough song for the last record when i was having a, a hard time trying to figure out what i wanted to write for that record and uh we were uh, stopped for 12 hours, one of those long drives where you have to stop. And uh, yeah, we were, uh, at uh, outside of Gillette, Wyoming, uh, for like a 12 hour break on our way from, uh, we were on our way from North Dakota to, or South Dakota to uh, Missoula, I think. And uh, so we stopped and we were walking the band all went to this like mexican restaurant together just a couple of blocks from the holiday inn express we were stuck at all day and i wrote this song on a napkin the first half of it on a napkin oh. and i was waiting for my queso and uh <laughs> then i went back to the room and i wrote the rest of the song and i was like ah i think i've got something <laughs> so that's uh, the best so it's called uh 21st century usa Awesome. And I've got a guitar down here. I can't see it. But, uh, they, no, they, they have yeah. faith. They have faith. <laughs> the parking lot beyond Oasis Tan, down the street from the Mexican, restaurant beyond the auto zone. 
And the place is honking payday loans. There's a Kmart and a KFC, a fitness center and an Applebee's, Wells Fargo and a Taco John's, a good time bar to get your bad swerve on. In a town that's named for razor blades, all American but Chinese made, folks working hard for shrinking pay. 21st century USA Out on 90 we might see you pass We got coal and methane gas We got jobs where the work is hard And stores to max out your credit cards In a town that ain't nowhere near, just like every town everywhere, folks working hard for shrinking pay. You say we have to hang on just a little bit longer and the Savior will come our way. We'll know him by the neon sign and the opulence he maintains. If Amazon can deliver salvation, I'll order it upon my phone. With Big Brother watching me always, why must I always feel so alone? for not enough at best women working just as hard for less we get together late at night at bars and bang each other like crashing cars working hard but it don't seem enough calloused hearts make even love seem tough prescription pills to make the pain hurt less to your callous heart just needs a rest and look at your children and you hope and pray they can conjure up a better day no one remembers how it got that way 21st century USA 21st century USA That's a good song to get from a Mexican restaurant on tour. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I got lucky that day. I got lucky that day for sure. And it's, it's cool. Like I like the thing that I, I think is when I was is cool is like when I was younger, I used to think that every kind of song or poem had to have these like massive, like poetic Robert Frost lines. As every single line had to be like life changing, and then. Somewhere recently, I kind of realized that the things that are life changing are the details, what they amount to in the song. Right. Whereas, you know, like you, you could say like the names of all these stores and then like, like make this incredible point later, like that you're like, wait a second. And I feel like it's almost more impactful because there's regular details in the song. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah. then is it, you know, then if you're trying to be like, and, and the trees were burning white of blah, purity, you know, and it, it doesn't make sense. Right. So yeah. that might be where I've gone wrong in this thing I've been working on the last two days. Is I think, <laughs> you know, I, the, you know, they've been, you know, of course, riots everywhere. And uh, I was, uh, I was, 
we just put the kids to bed and I was, I was outside my backyard and the sky the other night was just orange from all the crazy stuff going on downtown yeah. and uh and you could hear you know like tear gas things exploding and you could hear sirens on like helicopters everywhere and i wrote this kind of like apocalyptic thing and uh but i didn't but i haven't been able to get it yet so yeah. it's been, uh, uh so maybe you know maybe when i get my head right i'll be able to find the thing that makes it work i don't know but well, uh, I, it's i don't know it's it's tricky you have to find that you'll find the key you know and then it'll, it'll all it's like gluing it together and then all of a sudden everything else makes sense with in the song right tom t hall always tells you what he had what the person in the song had to eat i mean it's like that seems really? like a trick I've, uh, I've i've never read it it's just an observation as someone that's like listen to it's as many Tom T. Hall songs as I possibly could just to try to figure out what makes that guy tick as such an amazing storyteller. And I've, that's my that's my theory is that when he's in a jam, he's like, you know, and then there was eggs over easy. <laughs> <laughs> and it, just, it all starts that's, coming out. But that's always true. Tells you what they ate. I mean, no matter what the song's about, at some point there's going to be a line that tells you what they ate. And, uh, that's so and funny. I love that. <laughs> that's like the... Lyle Lovett does that too. Right. Where he'll tell you about like, he always he like does. writes these really like intense songs, but then he'll be like, I like eggs over easy. And you're like, right. what? In a flour yeah. tortilla? What are you talking about? And yeah. then all of a sudden you're like, oh, cause you're getting a picture of the guy. That's what makes sense. So brilliant. I watched his thing the other night uh, with John Hyatt with one of these where uh, they oh, were yeah. doing like a, like a, a back and forth and uh, it was really cool. And of course, you know, both of those guys are like master class at songwriting anyway. Yeah. And, Very uh, true. Which I know you had you had Lily on, didn't you? I did, yeah. The yeah. first show ever was yeah. with yeah. She That's was not my, a bad way to start it off. She's yeah. the best, man. It, I love Lily. It was so cool too, because like she was like my record release twin. Like so we released our records at the same day during all this. And it, it was like, I had known of her before just from a distance, but I feel like we became fast friends because we were, we found ourselves in kind of a jam together. And I was like, right. I was like, what about this idea? I got this show idea. How about this? And she was right away like, that's awesome. Let's do it. And I was like, yeah. cool. And love her. She's yeah. great. I love the record too. Her, her it's record awesome. is so great. And Trinity Lane was one of my favorite records of the decade. I, 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 I played that one to death. I still play it. And uh, yeah. uh, I, I love all her stuff. She toured with us. Uh, she was actually on that tour when I wrote that song. I just did. She, oh. was, uh, she was on that tour with us. And uh, man, they're a great band. Great so show. Cool. I love that. It's, it's a small, like, kind of cool little world. Like, there's, there's a lot of sure. everybody's friends and it's it's cool well i met you through you know our mutual friend yeah you know craig finn yeah and, uh, you know one of my favorite people in the world <laughs> he's awesome. and one of the greatest writers i've ever i mean he's just in, god damn that guy you that's know, he true makes my head hurt he said. yeah <laughs> he's i he had uh one song that he was doing we were doing on that tour that like from his new record and it was um it was called magic marker and yeah he Love sent it. me like a uh, like I guess it's an alternate version or something, but it was just acoustic. And he sent it to me on the tour, and I listened to one song for maybe like a week, where right. it was like, all I wanted to hear was that song over and over and over. He he's just incredible. I was incredible. at Garden Chicago when, oh, uh, yeah, when that record came out. I, I, I that I mean. I couldn't listen to it. It would just make it make me ball. Yeah, it it, it moved me so deeply, and uh, uh, I can remember I can remember you know playing it for my for my oldest and, uh, uh, and just marveling at what an amazing piece of work it is. You know, it is. He's an incredible writer. Incredible. Yeah. Credit. I, I love this, and that's kind of like why I do this because I'm so. I'm almost more fascinated with how do these people do it? But I'm right. like, I, I almost like at some point, I almost feel like I like I want to like do a tip 
post of like all the tips that I've gotten that are like, cause there's been incredible tips that people have given me and you know, they've given everybody like, it's like a real class on how to, what do you do? Like, what does everybody else do? You know, it's my, it's awesome. Yeah, man, I, I, I gotta tell you, as someone that I, I love banter at shows, I, I, I love, I mean, I love a good punk rock show that's pow pow, you know, as much as, <laughs> as anybody, but I, but I love when I see people like doing, you know, this type of thing, when they have like good banter. <laughs> it, <laughs> The night when I saw oh, you and uh, uh, at Rev Hall here in Portland, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was like amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes I forget that I'm not a slam poet. I, I feel like, <laughs> man, I like mean, I just really want to be a slam poet. Put down the guitar and only write poetry. Well, you, you if you ever decide to do it, you can. You've got. You, I think you can just. You, you, it was. It was so. Uh, inspiring to see someone who whose brain was able to just be so free with it you know and uh and, and, I, was Thank like, you. and I, was, I was talking to craig after it was over it's like you know it's like it's, like, it's like this every night he goes oh it's totally different every night <laughs> but it's like that but just you just never know you know i just <laughs> i don't right. know i just say things and like some people hate it like hate it. <laughs> that's I, how you I know like, you're on the right track i know like, I had a guy scream at me one time, and I was just like, cool, man, you can have your money back later. I'm yep. still doing this. But yep. I, I'm not, I can't be deterred. I'm just too, I'm too into it. So it's, it's cool, man. Good. Like, I, I love it. I, I, I love doing this kind of thing. So I'm happy. But so we're going to, we're going to wind down and then, and, and, and I'm going to let you go. But this is, this has been awesome. Well, we've got each other's info and shit, so let's stay in touch, you know? Uh, and, uh... Oh! Oh! Patterson froze. The connection kicked him off. All right, well, I'll say goodbye to everybody. So, Patterson, see you soon. I'll text you. Don't worry about it. The uh, It was good to have you on. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your donations today. And... Uh, I will see you very soon. Gonna do a uh, gonna do a special episode tomorrow. Look for that post coming up soon. Thank you, Patterson Hood, for having us and uh, or for being here. And thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye bye.